Thank you, Joan. Good morning. My name is Kathleen Ellsbury, and I'm from Seattle, Washington. I really never imagined I'd be here under these circumstances. Uh, I am here for the Truck Safety Coalition Sorrow to Strength Conference this week, but I'm here on behalf of two men who died way too young. I'm here really on behalf of everybody who uses our highways, too. My husband's name was Tony Kamar, and he was a uh, research scientist at the University of Washington, seismologist. This is a picture of him in Mount St. Helens crater. He was out <clears throat> with a seismologist colleague collecting some seismic equipment going one direction on Highway 101. A logging truck came around the curve, um, speeding, and the load dumped in the oncoming lane, crushing both men instantly. These men were well-known researchers and very well-liked by the communities and friends and family, of course. My husband enjoyed a lot, a lot of healthy activities like climbing and skiing. And he felt safety was paramount always. So it was ironic that someone else's disregard for safety is what killed Tony and Dan. It was October 4th, 2005, <clears throat> and this is the logging truck overturned. Um, the truck was overloaded by four tons. It was over 90,000 pounds. It um, instantly crushed him, as I said. The, the brakes were found to be faulty. The, bro the bolts broke. The bracket holding the logs on the truck came completely off. Uh, the driver had been cited for carrying a heavy load and speeding within the month prior to this crash. Uh, the company had almost 100 safety citations in the previous three years uh, prior to the crash. The driver's blood tested positive for methamphetamine at the scene. Yet the driver was able to continue to drive for another year after this crash. He was able to maintain a valid... Uh, license, commercial driver's license. <clears throat> so sadly, he, these two men were not exceptions. Um, there, uh, 5,000 Americans die, 100,000 Americans are injured on our highways every year. The driver eventually lost another load a year later, another load of logs, and at this point he was taken off the road and he is serving a four and a half year sentence for vehicular homicide at this time. As for me personally uh, and my daughter, um, it's left in an unimaginable hole in our lives and those of our fr uh, the friends and family of Tony and Dan as well. I began to see things a lot more clearly after this happened. I really felt an urgent need that something had to be done um, when we found out, especially about all these safety violations, repeated violations. So uh, I began to work with Representative Ruth Kage, a state legislator, and um, she has been extremely effective uh, in her leadership, getting some changes in Washington State's laws regarding trucking safety. She's been really relentless, and uh, I'm sure there's a future for her work in this area as well. So I am here in the other Washington on behalf of two wonderful guys that were lost unnecessarily. And I'm here to ask Congress and the President to freeze the truck sizes and freeze the weight limits. It just doesn't make sense to go up on this. I urge them to enact new laws also that are effective with real teeth aimed at the violators, especially the repeat violators. I, I think having bigger trucks on the road is simply a bigger hazard. I ask people to go to stopbiggertrucks.org to sign the petition to prevent heavier trucks from using our roadways. 
the unimaginable can happen to any of you. Weight can kill, and cutting corners can kill. Thank you. Before I start my formal statement, I'd really like Shani's friends to come up here and stand here and, you know, just as a tribute to her and, and to these lifelong friendships that she'll have. Please join us up here. Really appreciate this. Anyway, good morning. My name is Jacqueline Gillen, and I am a board member of Citizens for Reliable and Safe Highways and have been involved with this organization for over 19 years. I am also Vice President of Advocates for Highway and Auto Safety. As you have heard before me that every year we kill about 5,000 people in truck crashes. In the last five years we've had over 25,000 people killed and a half a million injured. And this morning you've heard only four stories. Just think, this Mother's Day, how many mothers are going to receive sympathy cards instead of Mother's Day cards because they have lost a child in a truck crash. It is a public health crisis and it's affecting every person, in every community, in every state across the country. That's why we've had truck crash victims, survivors, and their family members come to Washington, D.C. and spend today and tomorrow on Capitol Hill with their stories and their messages. And in sum, their message is, we've had enough. Political leaders would never, ever tolerate this many people dying in airline crashes. Yet year in and year out, the death and injury toll remains the same while the safety agenda is stalled in Congress or completely ignored at the Department of Transportation. And in fact, I would just edit Joan's remark about how we need a, uh, we don't need a lap dog at the Department of Transportation overseeing truck safety. We don't need a lap dog, we need a bulldog. We need a bulldog to go in there and get the job done because this agenda has been languishing too long. This morning, safety, truck safety advocates are releasing a ranking of the most dangerous states for truck crashes using the measure of truck crashes per 100,000 population. I'm sorry, if you want to stand right there. Here's the chart. Uh, we're also going to have it up on our website. And a lot of people ask, why are you choosing this uh, health risk measure? Well, this is a health risk measure of looking at truck crashes per 100,000 population that's commonly used in the health community for assessing the prevalence of different diseases and trauma, including traffic crash trauma, as well as cancer, uh, heart uh, uh, deaths and injuries. And we really thought this was an important measurement because usually the Department of Transportation looks at uh, truck crash fatalities in terms of how many hundreds of millions of miles have been traveled. So what can happen using that measurement is deaths can go up, but if we have more trucks on the road traveling more miles, it makes it look like everything's fine. And is that really the measurement of what truck crashes are doing to our families? And this is the kind of statistic of looking at improvement based on more trucks traveling more miles, the Department of Transportation has relied on and justified for not moving forward on a tough hours of service rule, on prohibiting uh, bigger trucks, in requiring electronic onboard recorders, and it goes on and on and on. So that's the reason we took this measurement. And let me briefly list the top 20 states. We have. Uh, Number one, Wyoming. Number two, Arkansas. And these are listed in terms of the danger, looking at truck crash fatalities as a factor of the population of that state. We have number three is Montana, number four, Oklahoma, number five, Alabama, number six, New Mexico, number seven, Louisiana, number eight, Kansas, number nine, West Virginia, and number 10, Mississippi. So it doesn't matter what region of the country you're living in, truck crashes are killing too many people and we're not doing enough. 